topic of courage, even as uh, about a half a century ago, there was something called the Woolworth Sit-Ins. We still today talk about how it was a pivotal point in the civil rights movement in the United States of America, right here in Greensboro, North Carolina, just down the road. And one of the people that was part of that was a skinny little teenager. I think you were wearing glasses back then. And uh, his name is Clarence Henderson. And Clarence is going to join you right now for a few minutes to talk about civil rights as it is today, 2014. Please welcome the courageous and my friend, Clarence Henderson. Come on up, Clarence. I'd like to say good evening, everybody. Good evening. You guys are not very excited. Don't you know you live in America? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Greatest country in the world. Throughout American history, we've had a number of movements that have changed or impacted America greatly. One of them was the Civil Rights Movement, started from 1958. To 1964. I had the distinct pleasure of participating in a portion of that um, to change the course of history for America. And that was to change segregation. We had a chance to put Jim Crow on trial. And if you understand anything about America, you understand that it's a series of movements that go on. And I call them and I identify them in two different movements. One is the agenda-driven movement. The other one is the principle-driven movement. Well, the Civil Rights Movement was a principle-driven movement. It was a movement to identify we as a people. And had it not been for our Declaration of Independence, our co Constitution, and our Bill of Rights, it would never have worked. That brings to mind, if we travel back a few years, who put blacks in position to be able to utilize these three charges of freedom? Well, if we go back and revi revisit, then the movement that we need to have right now is the American Constitutional Movement. A movement that will have the same spirit as a Republican Party when they passed the 13th Amendment, abolishing slavery. The 14th Amendment, giving black men citizenship. The 15th Amendment, giving blacks the right to vote. These were all done by the Republican Party. These were all movements. And when it comes to women's rights, the Republican Party tried for 40 years to get the 19th Amendment passed. And guess who was trying to prevent that, that amendment from being passed? The Democratic Party. Now, I speak to you about history because if you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. Who was it but Gerald Ford, Republican president, that changed Black History Week the Black History Month. When you begin to look at our history, then we see a great transformation of misinformation whereby the Democratic Party has taken credit for things that they have not done. Now, how do I know that? I came out of the Democratic Party, so I know both sides of the spectrum. So nobody can tell me that I'm trying to fool you because I only see one side. See, what I see, and here's what happens. Within the two parties, you have the white liberal Democrats that have now made their party the plantation. And they come to people that look like me and say that you are a victim. You, are, you cannot do what needs to be done. You are a survivor, but I'm here to tell you that I'm not either one. I'm an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Therefore, 
the Republican Party has a challenge to tell the history of what has been done. The values of the party is astronomical. Now when we look at where we, look, where we are today, as I said, you had a white liberal Democrats that have made the, uh, their, their, their party the plantation. You have black liberal Democrats that because they're in the big house, that they want to remain there, they will come to people like me and say, listen, I am working hard for you. My question has been for a number of years, if you're working hard for me, then what are you doing for me? And I haven't found anything they're really doing. Now the Republican Party says all we'll give you is an opportunity. And see, I've always been a very competitive person. All I want is an is opportunity. I don't need anybody to open the door because I open the door with myself. And that's what the American opportunity is all about. It's not about entitlement, stealing other folks' money, raising taxes. We've been fighting against this big government which keeps being increased by uh, the Democratic Party says it needs to get louder. It needs to get larger. But it's better for smaller government, all the regulations that they, they put out here. And I'm a little example of that because I went into that system and had three opportunities in America. One, you have an opportunity to go to work for, for somebody, go to work for yourself, and then put other people to work. Well, I've been through all three. And I ran a business for over 30 years in America. And what has happened is that through regulations, mostly by the Democratic Party, are part of the things that we used to do in the housing industry, lending new people to buy uh, houses, that we, we got put out of that business by overregulation. So what my challenge is right now is that this time next year, they are about myself and some other conservative, black conservatives are going to lead a movement into Washington, D.C. You may think I'm crazy, but I've done it before. And that movement is going to culminate, culminate, culminate and say to all of America, that if you want to keep this land free, we have to remove ourselves from the tyranny of King George III and always be taking freedom's next step. And freedom's next step is for our individual rights. We've gone from uh, uh, basing it on the color of skin versus the content of character, whereby it's not about the color of your skin being black, it's about whatever color it is. It's based on ideologies. If your ideologies are different, they want to close your mouth. The liberals want to close your mouth. They want to attack the person and not the issue. And I'm constantly swimming upstream, and you know what? I enjoy it. I take on the challenge of talking to any Democrat there is. I tell you what happened to me, and I'll close with this. The head of an NAACP in the state of North Carolina wanted to go on this uh, private liberal radio station. And he wanted a Republican to come on so he could interview him or her. And so somebody sent the Clarence Henderson. And when they found out I was coming, guess what? They canceled the program. So you tell me, I'll stand toe to toe with anybody. I'm here this evening for, for, for Vince Coastman because we need leaders. Leaders that will represent the uh, the law and not the rule of law. And instead of instead of instead of politicians that want to uh, 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 govern by the rule of man, we've got to get get away from that. We uh, Ronald Reagan said we're we're never more than one decade away from losing our freedom, folks. We're in six years of losing our freedom. By the time the current president gets out, it'll be eight years. We've got two years from there to change this thing around. It's time, America, it's time to make a change, and the Republican Conservative Party can do it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. God bless. Where is Nancy?